Welcome back, folks. I hope you're having a marvelous Monday. Bob and Man Cub here. Today we're talking about getting into pipe welding, uh, stick welding, stick welding roots, six inch schedule 40. In my personal experience, I've seen about eight common mistakes that people uh, need to take into consideration, some do's and some don'ts. So uh, Cub and I are kind of going to toss this back and forth. First thing we're going to talk about is prep. We have an unfinished coupon here and we have one that you've already done completely. Uh, 37 and a half degrees, plus or minus, nothing's been done to it, sharp edge, nothing's been cleaned on the inside. Yep. Good practice to clean the inside of the pipe. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. This one you finished completely. We've got the clean the inside, put the root face on, the bevel face is clean. How'd you do it? Uh, basically first, I uh, put it up here on the angle, row cone this all the way around. Then I went over here and did the, with the flapper wheel furred 40 grit and did that. Then I stood it up on how it's sitting now. Then I put a laying on here. Then I just used a, like a electro 330 seconds engaging. Oh, to gauge your Gauge thickness. my laying. Okay. And that's about it. Okay. So, and obviously if we were doing full joints, you'd do the same thing, but it'd be fixed. So you could use a quarter inch grinding wheel, flapper discs. There's, there's options of various grinding mediums. Oh yeah. Okay. So the next thing we need to talk about is we need to get another coupon clean and prep. We mm -hmm. need to talk about fit up, right? Yep. I see, uh, you know, the options in fit up too little a gap, too tight a gap or too wide of a gap can get you in trouble. So you want to keep it simple. And, you know, we talked about putting a three thirty second root face or landing on here. And I personally like to teach 332nd root opening. Uh, how do you go about fitting this up? What do you do to space this? How do you manipulate the two tubes and tack them? The way I got taught is basically you bent the filler rod earlier. Basically just put this on here. And I took, take the other pipe and just set it on here, just like this. Okay. You either you use a straight edge or you use your fingers as uh, matching them up or use a high-low gauge. Don't want mismatch alignment called high-low. Yep. That that's what I was curious about, and I see people struggle with that. And then the next thing I have seen in the past that people make a mistake of is putting a tack in the wrong spot. So that, I mean, when you put a tack weld in here to fit this up, tack weld shrinks, and I've seen them get their wire stuck. Yeah, that's a pain in the butt. Yeah, and it takes a, a long time. It's, you might as well just sit back and watch a show because it's going to take a while <laughs> for them to get it out of there. I've done it. So, you know, if you can pivot this, you put a tack in, you pivot it slightly, and you want to get this wire out of here. That's why I have a, a problem with that. Personally, I, I mean, I like this method, but I also like, I also like doing the, uh, the method where we're using a spacer we can use the same spacer but i don't want to leave it in there per se okay and then that way you can just directly reach inside oh, and yeah. adjust everything you know <clears throat> to get this fit once you have the high low out of this fit mm -hmm. we're just concentrating on one tack up here at the top after that, you can manipulate and turn and get your high-low out, but you need to recognize that gap. So there are methods to do this. One of them is the spacer wire, leave it in there. One of them is to space it, take the, take the wire out, put your tack in, go. Yeah, that's definitely good for beginners because uh, if they don't know, exactly. three thirty seconds is in their head or exactly. visualize. Exactly. Everything. Got to build that confidence when you're starting out. All right, before we tack up anything, we have to have a welding machine here. We're running off the... Rebel 235 IC. We've got it on stick mode. We got 80 amps. We have DCEP, which is what 6010 runs on. Uh, the first thing that I've seen a lot of people make a mistake of is they come over here and put too little or too big of a tack in. Put too big of a tack in, you can't move and manipulate your final fit. You put too little of a tack in, it's too loose and your tack breaks when you try to manipulate things. So what's the ideal length of a tack here just to start out with? You go a quarter inch. About a quarter of an inch and that holds just fine. So let's, uh, let's rock on. Hey, where's my hood? It, it, no, no, wow, no, 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 no. That is awesome. 
awesome. That's that's, that's off uh, that's off limits. What? This is the cameraman's here. <laughs> the heck with him? Really? You gotta take it up with him. Man, I'm telling you, that is supreme. Look at that. That is pretty nice. That is so cool. Copper they did a rivets. great job on that. Outlaw Leather USA is, man, they are, they are up there. All right, where's my hood at, man? You got the wonderful what? man cup sticker there. <coughs> you got to be kidding me. I know. That guy's pretty awesome. He's good looking, too. Very common mistake I've seen people do when they're tacking is strike anywhere outside of the groove. That's a that's a no-no. So, you know, we got to be real careful of that. Another mistake I've seen is opening up too big of a keyhole. It's either too high of amperage, too wide a gap, or coming out of this and pausing in one spot too long. Personally, I care. I I like to just run right up to the point where I'm going to stop and flip out of this quickly and not stay there too long. Uh, we stay there too long, keyhole gets real big. We got to be filling that back in. Right. We need to feather the leading edges of these. Feathering means we kind of bevel them back, clean them back, so that we can get 100% root fusion and blend into this on the back side. Good, uh, good tie-in. Yes, yeah. exactly. All right, sir, there's about six more things we need to talk about after we get fit up. First one, let's just take amperage. Um, you know, if we run the ideal amperage, then we don't have to do a lot of manipulation. We just do a gentle stitch. We're looking at the weld pool. We've got a keyhole around the end of the rod. Things are blending together nicely. All right. At the right amperage, you know, what we're looking for on the inside of the pipe ideally is a good gentle reinforcement we're not going to get anything more we don't want anything more than an eighth of an inch thickness on the inside of the root right uh, too flat is not good we want all of our tacks all of our restarts blended together so you know with the right amperage personally i like to just watch the keyhole around the end of the rod and just gently stitch it and manipulate it, let it fill. I'm looking underneath the rod, looking at the shelf to make sure that it's breaking the edge down. Uh, if you run too high of an amperage, what happens? Get a big keyhole. Oh man, blows up big time. And then what do you got to do? Uh, basically, you'll whip it forward a lot. Whip, whip it, whip did it you real say, good. Did you say whip it? <laughs> well, you have to whip it to, because you have to step out of the weld pool, let the weld pool freeze, and then you got to get back into it. Hopefully you get down right to the right spot and make it blend. It's real easy to, for me anyway, it's real easy to leave a void and not, you know, blend the inside root together. It's like I didn't, I'm whipping out of it, but I didn't come down to the right spot. Or I mm. get down too low and it gets too big on the inside of the root. Mm. I just don't, for, it's a personal preference to me. I just don't like whipping it that much, I, you know. I, li I like just a gentle stitch. Now let's talk about too cold. Uh, you know, obviously when it's too cold, we have problems even starting the arc. We're not coming off of our tack correctly, I don't think anyway. It's just a lot harder to get that, that good blend. You know, you, 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 we've been talking about maintaining the proper keyhole. You get too cold and the, and the weld just kind of lay in there. And the only thing you can do to save it is long arc the rod. You gotta you gotta pull it back a little bit. Long arc, go slower. I mean, there's there's all kinds of subtle movements and techniques here. So you know, amperage is key. You gotta find that comfort range, and all machines are a little bit different. Uh, probably the next common thing we need to talk about is rod angle. How do you run yours? Do you do you kind of reference the center of the pipe all the time? Yeah. And make a transition? I try to stay uh, straight in, if not five, five to 10 degrees, like dragging the puddle up. Center, yeah, center of the, referencing the center of the pipe. Yes, sir. You've got a little window, just like you do with any of the other variables. There's 
you don't have to be exact, but you need to understand all these variables to put it all together. So I, I, I feel the same way. I think it's a lot easier to reference the center of the pipe because the arc force, the arc, the pool comes off the end of the rod and it's, and it's right there. Plus you can see it better, I think. If you run, if you run too steep and drag it up, to me, that's not directing the arc pool down in there, just the same as this way. If, if I'm running way too much of a pointed up rod here, way too much angle pointed up, what do you see? Big old long nasty fingernail looking mm. thing. And it's like, we're not direct. Look, it's like the weld pool is like laying in the groove. It's not doing anything. It's, it's not impressive, you know. Gotcha. So, you know, rod angle is another variable that that uh, needs to be mastered um, the next thing we can talk about is is travel speed I'll, you know we fielded a lot of questions about uh, you know travel speed well what about you know what am I supposed to be looking at <clears throat> yeah exactly if you go too slow things are really stacking up both on could be on the inside and the outside you know, you're leaving too much of a reinforcement on the inside and you may not see it, or, you know, it could be coming out and you're just kind of filling up the whole groove all at one time. If you go too fast, I've seen, I've walked by a, a lot of people, I've watched them running roots out in the field and, and even in the weld lab in the classroom, they go a little bit too fast and you start seeing all these little holes. Mm. <laughs> or they jump together, or they, <laughs> I'm sorry, they outran their, their route that they, they weren't maintaining that root keyhole all the way up. They got to go back and fix all those. You shine a light in there and they're going, wow, what's all those bug holes? <laughs> <in there?" laughs> Little voids, they ran too fast. So there is a too fast and a too slow and a just right. And again, got some window of opportunity in there. I guess the last thing we should talk about is restarts. And we touched on this a little bit with the fit. What did we do with the fit? We tacked up and then what? We uh, feathered our uh, sides of our tacks. Okay, so we could start on? The middle the, of the tack right. and, blend, and blend in to the so uh, stopping So a tack. restart is essential because you need to, you need to start your rod on Something the part of the weld that you've already done, not out into the groove somewhere and then come down because you just boogered up your groove. So you want to feather all your starts and stops, thin them out a little bit so you can strike an arc, let the rod settle down a little bit, come off of that restart and let that keyhole establish itself and then take off. Take off with the right rod angle, right travel speed. If you have to manipulate some, you know, when we talk about manipulation, we talk really stitching and whipping and all that or just barely moving it you know so basically the keyhole will tell you what to what to look for and what to do like what to look for basically is that right yeah, yeah. keyhole if you're yeah if you're watching it and sometimes you get in some strange positions on pipe and you got to look it's almost like you got to look underneath the rod or through or through the rod to barely see what's going on you know and other times you're right in front of it and you can see it real real clear gotcha. so Again, you know, there's, there's a few things to take under consideration here. None of them are super hard, but for training people and building their confidence, you know, master, be aware of these things, the prep, fit, amperage, arc length, rod angle, manipulation, travel speed, and, that re and do, blend your restarts and everything. So, boy, I hope, this, uh, I hope this helps people out and we can field some more questions and uh, and get people going and started on the right path. I want to thank everybody for watching Weld.com. Appreciate your subscriptions. Hit the love button and subscribe. And what else do we hit? The little, the little, little dinger bell? Yeah, Ding hit, that, hit that bell over there so you can get a notification of when some cool content comes out. And if you guys want shirts like this, camera guy will put a link below. He will? Yeah. He's a cool guy. Yeah, he is. What's Facebook, this? Instagram. What's it say? Cub is a best, the best welder in the world. I don't think that's what that says. And who wrote this over here? Oh, Bob is my hero. Bob is my hero. MCW. MCW.